Good morning. So, uh, so I'm Ali Shoker. I'm one of the co-authors of uh, Delta-based CRGTs and pure operation-based CRGTs. Uh, I'm based in uh, Braga. We work together in the, we work for Inesk Tech, which is, which is an associate lab, associate lab uh, with uh, a lot of disciplines like uh, security, dispute systems, uh, uh, formal methods, uh, 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 even like entrepreneurship, industry, uh, uh, robotics. Uh, so we are around 1,000 researchers. Uh, and we are, our group, like in Braga, we are devoted to work on, uh, to develop pure operation-based CRDTs and delta-based CRDTs regarding all the stuff that uh, uh, you've mentioned regarding uh, garbage collection, efficiency, and all this kind of stuff, and migration and all this. Um, so uh, my talk today will be on uh, as secure as possible eventual consistency. And basically, by eventual consistency, I'm going to focus on CRGTs, like using CRGTs on eventual consistency to reconcile conflicts. Uh, as secure as possible, it's using Byzantine fault tolerance. So you probably know it. It's a buzzword recently because of blockchains. Uh, so I raised in the BFT community. I did my PhD in 2009 to, uh, on that. So uh, my talk will be a little bit... Uh, We'll touch upon the system. I'm going to describe an overview of the system because it's quite complicated to cover in 15 minutes. Uh, so I should acknowledge uh, this work has been like through three projects, Sync Free, Litecone, two European projects, and Tech for Growth, a national project. And these are my co-authors on this work. Hossam Yaktin is my PhD student, and Carlos Becker, you know him from CRDs. Uh, so, just to motivate for, for the talk, so we all see this, we've used to see this kind of, uh, of message when, when systems fail. But the message is that this is, not, this is no longer acceptable in this era. We can't accept this kind of thing. And we should know what are the reasons behind things to fix them, okay? So, I think that many of the engineers in the industry mainly, so they don't know or they they didn't know about Byzantine fault tolerance. From now on, I, I think that this started to leverage. But uh, previously, they didn't. And I think that we need this kind of culture to educate engineers about Byzantine fault tolerance, because systems will break if we consider this kind of model. So um, who is familiar with Byzantine fault tolerance? Cool. Uh, so let me try to describe what's the problem and what I will be providing as a solution. So first, uh, let's assume this part, which is an eventual consistent system. We have a couple of servers, eventual consistent servers. They are replicas. Uh, and they are communicating through reliable causal broadcast or causal broadcast between them. And clients are usually accessing each node. Uh, and they get their reply immediately without synchronizing with the others. And they synchronize in the background. It's the CRDT model. Um, so in this, in this kind of, so like, I would say that Nuno was claiming that the system will converge with this. And it will not. It depends actually on the fault model that we're using. So all the systems currently, they assume the uh, fault recovery method, uh, model, fault. But assume that, for example, these servers are not applying the operation correctly whether it's an operation, increment, decrement, add, remove, or it's a merge, or it's, okay? If the server is not behaving well, you will never reach conversions, okay? So uh, what we are doing is that we integrate this with a Byzantine fault tolerance cl cluster. We uh, create a BFT proxy uh, with, on each server, and we push, we push the history of the operations to the uh, BFT cluster to validate them and get a certificate to send to the client. So what we are doing now is to certificate the history the, that's common across all the servers, okay? So in this, we guarantee that we are working in the back end. We are, we are not uh, 
uh, creating any consistency on the front level. So, uh, uh, so I'm going to give a small brief on Byzantine fault tolerance and eventual consistency, how they work. Basically, I will be very fast here because you know them. Uh, and our protocol, we call it Bizec, but we hope we get another name, a better name. Uh, I'm going to show the trade-offs and discussions, some discussion and future work. Uh, so what is Byzantine fault tolerance? So Byzantine fault tolerance is actually the strongest fault model because Byzantine players can do anything, anything that you could, could imagine. Okay, so a Byzantine node can lie, can remove the memory, can add things, can, okay, and can even behave correctly. So this is... <laughs> uh, so the approach usually that's followed by Byzantine fault tolerance protocols, so this historical since like the 82 or even before, since Lampert's paper. So uh, the approach is usually to use the state machine replication with the majority consensus. Uh, it's similar kind of uh, Paxis, if you know about Paxis. So uh, the idea is to have a kind of a replica. For example, for uh, each datum, you have like three, four replicas. And then we should guarantee that the uh, write quorums and uh, read quorums overlap. Okay? So this, actually, this is what happens, what's, uh, what's correct in uh, sim uh, systems like Paxis or Raft or something. But in Byzantine Photons, you need the intersection to be non-Byzantine, even. Okay, so it's not only, uh, it's not enough to have one intersection. So that's why you usually see the proofs. You need for, if you assume that you have one Byzantine server, you will need three F plus one, okay? So for one server, you need four server, a total of four servers to guarantee one fault among the servers. And, uh, the very famous uh, protocol is PBFT, uh, developed by Castro and Liskov in the 2000. And there are a lot of protocols, among them mine. I developed other protocols, but this is really the most robust and uh, famous one. And it was the, one, the first one, actually. You can consider it the first seminal work. It's the same uh, practical one. So the first and the last. <laughs> Uh, so, the, regarding the challenges in this model, why the, it's different from the other models? Because it's impossible to distinguish between a Byzantine node and a slow node, and you can you could imagine uh, how much does it make sense this in, on the internet uh, platform, and also it's impossible to distinguish between a well-behaving Byzantine node from a correct node. Okay, so uh, so a server could behave like for a long time in a correct way, so you could, you could never catch him. And, uh, recent, uh, and uh, finally, the independent of failures. So you assume independence of failure, okay, among replicas, but they should, behave, should be de deterministic. It's kind of controversy. Huh? So usually this, this work, so uh, if you know inversion programming, uh, this kind of stuff. So you could implement the same protocol with different uh, operating system, with different uh, programming languages. Uh, you install different operating systems, different hardware. So you, you can go to the extreme. But usually, I don't think that this is uh, what's uh, being done in practice, because it's quite costly. So these are basically the challenges. For eventual consistency, I'm going to assume that you know more or less the, what, what should be, uh, what would help to understand what's coming on. So basically you have, as I, and I've explained before, you have servers, replicas, uh, library broadcast between them, and the clients could, could access the servers immediately and take the reply back without synchronization. Uh, uh, and this assumes that, okay, you're gonna get some conflicts you're gonna resolve them using probably, for example, CRDTs in our case, if you want. Uh, and uh, applications should accept say reads, okay? Or read in the past. So why would, uh, not just use PBFT, for example, as a BFT protocol with, with eventual consistency? Okay, the, the answers might be obvious. First, because uh, PBFT is blocking, which means that any request from the client 
uh, we'll need to like visit all the servers in the cluster to get back to the, uh, the reply back to the clients. Uh, and the second thing is uh, it assumes that uh, nodes are deterministic and it requires total order, okay? So in the eventual consistency model, uh, you have a non-blocking or no agreement. So you actually execute things immediately on the server and then we think how to resolve, okay? So that's controversy. And you have a partial order. You don't have total order, which means that you have concurrent operations that you could at the same instant, for example, apply different operations on different servers. At the same instant, it might look indeterministic, okay? Because you are actually implementing, uh, executing uh, different operations. So here, it's, this might be confusing. So the, the replicas are, are deterministic, but you are actually, the input is different, okay? You are applying different operations because they are concurrent. So that's why it couldn't be used. Like you couldn't simply use PBFT. So our approach is to do this thing. <laughs> so this is one of the papers, uh, someone from Microsoft, I guess. He wrote a blog and was complaining about the complexity of B BFT protocols. And uh, we indeed, that's true, okay? But uh, we, we should not go to that area, okay? So this is the wrong <laughs> way to go. And we had some experience from uh, these guys in the US also. They tried to implement this and to change the protocol to make it a EC, uh, eventual consistent protocol, BFT protocol. And they noticed that uh, because of complexity, they couldn't implement it. And even the specs are, are vague. Like, uh, uh, so we here, we follow another approach in BISEC we try to keep the uh, different uh, layers, modular layers. We keep the eventual consistent layer as it is, and we just plug in the Byzantine fault tolerance layer. And how it works, this works as usual, okay? And then we only work with the Byzantine fault tolerance on the, uh, on the history of the log, okay? And uh, as you know that in the Byzantine fault tolerance, we have said that it's, you should have a total order kind of total. So it means that you should push the same message to the Byzantine uh, cluster at, at any time, which means uh, you need to have a consistent offset here to send, okay? So actually you have a log, so the top of the log will change, will be different across the replicas, but at some history in the, to the top, uh, uh, there is an offset up to some history, in the back, the lock should be the same. So even if the order is different, but if you execute the same operations, even in different orders, it, it will, uh, you will get the same, uh, the same reply or the same uh, state because this is what your DT does, okay? Because they are commutative. So uh, this, this is basically the, the idea that uh, we have uh, developed. And the nice thing is that uh, it's, it's modular because it's easy to test and maintain. So this is one of the well, complexities of Byzantine tolerance. It's not easy to test the system and also the integration. So in this kind of, of system, it's more practical. Like you have your, run, your running system, you keep it running, and then you plug these and you test them, okay? So you don't need to change the protocol that you are running in your servers, okay? You just plug in these, you test them, and then you remove them, and your system in the foreground is working perfectly, okay? And there are uh, also other uh, options uh, I'm gonna discuss now. So why uh, Bizec excels? Because you care about security, but you can't give up availability. So you can't use PBFT because it's strongly consistent, okay? So in this way, you need, you really care about availability in the first place, but also about security, okay? Because here, this is kind of uh, a question or, or debate, okay? So if you are giving the client a certificate on the history, so how would it help the client? It's not secure, okay? So that's why we are saying it's, uh, as secure as possible, okay? This is what's the best that you could do because you, ca you couldn't compromise availability. It's not your option. The first option is for availability. 
And then you care about consistency, in eventual consistency. Why? Because in CRDTs, CRDTs themselves, they want, the system won't want to converge with the CRDTs if some of the replicas are uh, Byzantine. So I could give you an example. You have a counter two, and uh, uh, with state two, you have uh, an operation uh, increment one. The answer should be three. A Byzantine server could give like five. Okay, so in a CRT two model, this isn't it an operation in CRT. Um, yep. Uh, that is digitally signed. Well, all, all operations are digitally signed. The, the Byzantine node can only censor uh, some of the operations, uh, and if they're causally chained, then they would have to censor entire chains of causal history. But they wouldn't be able to forge or change the state, right? Um, yeah, but I'm not talking about forging the state. I'm talking about executing the operation. It's not the state, because here in, the, in, the, in, the, in this model, eventual consistency model, the different replicas, they don't synchronize on the state. They just disseminate operations. And everyone, you like, you trust everyone to execute the operation. And if the execution is correct, we know that all the replicas will converge, not because they exchange state, in this case, because they exchange operations. Yep. But what are the attacks that you can uh, that you can protect against? Because it's I think it's time because if clients can execute, if I can execute an operation and that is a bogus operation or a malicious operation and then I can sign it, so you, you don't know that I've done that. So it's what are the attacks that your system can protect? Yes. Yeah, so so your question is whether the client, if the client is issuing requests to other replicas. Uh, in a different way? I guess maybe the, the confusion is in the model. Like I'm, I'm thinking of all clients as, as replicas as well. So a client executes a, a, an operation, they sign it, they propagate that operation through reliable broadcasts. Uh, yeah, so, so, so only here in this model, the servers uh, hold states, CRDC states. And the servers in this case are, could be like many servers. This event is consistent, it's four, but it can be like 100 servers. Okay, or proxy servers, or if you want the browsers. <laughs> okay, but the client, the end client, is interested only in the uh, in the reply. Like, read the state. It's four. Okay, you don't. The client doesn't need to hold uh, the state. It's only the reply. Okay, so everything is happening in the replica. Uh, did I answer your question? What's your question? Um, so, and uh, you care about your legacy system, and this is the point that we've said. You can still run, run your system, and uh, you, uh, you test your new plugin, uh, probably online, if you want. Uh, and you care about your clients. Actually, uh, in, this, in, the, in this way that uh, we've decided, as I've told you, like, in the replica, so the, the basic method is to push the certificate, kind of certificate on the history to the client. Now, for example, some clients might have different uh, levels of security. Some clients say that, no, I don't need any security. I want the basic uh, eventual consistency model, like it works now. I don't care about Byzantine, okay? So you can, you can uh, like, forget about certificates. You can always read anything and you forget about certificates. A uh, very conservative client say, no, I want a, a certificate for every operation. I want that every operation should be correct, okay? So here we have, like, you can tune, there's a knob to, to, to tune. Every client could ask for a certain level of certificate. For example, I can accept 1,000 operations without certificate. I can't accept more, okay? So always, so I can tolerate uh, a log of 1,000 operations to be faulty, probably, suspicious, okay? And uh, every client, for example, in this state have a different option. So either you can still use the eventual consistency model, even with this plugin, and you can still use the Byzantine fault model, even, okay? If you, ha if you are very conservative, you are as if you are using Byzantine fault protocol, okay? And the spectrum between them. Uh, also, there are trade-offs. For example, here, 
the clients need to tolerate some history, as we have said, and this is the best that you can do uh, if you care for availability in the first place. Also, clients are not allowed to talk to multiple clients, so at any time, a client should only talk to one server or one replica, but it can switch to others, even under faults or slow, or, but in this case, it will negotiate with the servers, okay? And then uh, you have the BFT assumptions, the traditional ones, like uh, independence of failures and this kind. Uh, and I think that's it. So basically, uh, in, in this model, so uh, we have uh, a system that stays, that gives the priority for availability and still gives you some security guarantees in the background without compromising the availability. And, uh, uh, and basically, you can still work on the eventual consistent part, and you have like experts on Byzantine fault tolerance to test the system, to work on the system, and it's just plug and play, okay? Uh, and uh, that's it. Uh, that's it. So this is uh, another thing that I want to announce. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I could uh, get you your questions if you have any. Uh, could you give an example of, of, of uh, uh, one or two examples of an attack that this system might mitigate? Uh, uh, for example, an attack, for example, assume that uh, there is a, a bug in the system. A bug. Okay. This is, this is one, one case. Uh, another thing, because in this system, for example, you, have, you might have different implementations, you might have different operating systems, so you might have this bug. This is the, a common thing. Uh, you have also, there might be an attack from, uh, from the outside to compromise one server, okay? So you could get uh, different numbers. So you replace one version with another version, okay, of the code. And this certificate is given to the client to, can be given to the client to demonstrate that the result is correct? The certificate is signed by the four replicas, by all the replicas, uh -huh. eventually. So it will know for sure that all, every, everyone agrees on the same value. Okay, so. So they, they agree on, on the total order of the log and they agree on the value? On the state in general. Because in this case, our clients, they don't hold the CRGT or log. Okay, so they only read. Thank you.